Can anyone hear us? Yes. Are you there, Harry? No. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, mm. um, let's get rid of the Jabra. <laughs> Hey Tom, hey Beck. Gus. Hey Gus, good hey, to see Gary. you, looking well. Howdy. How you going? Good, good to see you, mate. Likewise. Got, still got that uh, pommy suntan you got from the UK. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, Tom. <laughs> looking good. Caught up with, um, with Alice and Warren last night, which was fun. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, I saw the photo. It looked great. Yeah. Yeah, we had a good night. Yeah, Alice is, is getting... Um, is, who was who she staying with? Was she staying with one of you guys? or? Uh, she was going to stay with us last night, but then she ended up staying in her hotel because I know she was heading down to Canberra today yeah. Okay. Uh, to see Lisa. And then I think she's staying mm -hmm. with uh, when she gets back. Um, Doing the full Bali Hope tour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then she'll be down in Melbourne uh, in in a week, I think. Yeah, so, I think next week she's heading down. Yeah. Yeah. So we're all going to catch up for lunch down by the down by the Yarra in Melbourne. So it should be good. <clears throat> oh, beautiful. That way. So Clara, just um, Angus, Beck, and Goats here are all from tw all from September. So um, some previous body hope. <laughs> Claire is one of the our brilliant newcomers, as is Bella. Hi, Bella. Hello. Hi, Beck. Hi, Bella. Hi, right, everybody. I've got to, I've probably got to tell you, Tom, too. I'm an Aussie, not a New Zealander. Apologies. Sorry. No. <laughs> I just, I, I just, because you, you know, Karen, Karen. I, just, I know, I know. And when I, no, no, there is no apology. I love the Kiwis. It's just, I can't do the Haka. So <laughs> okay, I saw the note and went, uh oh, he thinks I'm a Kiwi. I can't do that. We'll let we'll let Karen do the hacker. We'll let he's yeah. um it's his speciality, so <laughs> we'll watch him. Yeah, so Karen did a Karen did a hacker when he finished the ultra in 2018. And then he came to our swim run and I, and him and his brother both did a hacker then. So um they've made oh. it a they've made it a, a, a Kiwi tradition, yeah. <laughs> DJ, have you got Alice coming your way on the on the um I'm I'm in um I'm catching up with Alice on Sunday, so I'm actually in Brisbane um just for a couple of days heading I'm about to head back straight after this call. So Kat, Alice is going down to a wedding in what she called, when she was originally coming out. So I've got a wedding in this really small town. You probably haven't heard of it. It's called Canberra. And actually the capital, the capital of Australia. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're catching up on Sunday night. Gus has already caught up with her, I think. Yeah, we yeah. Went, out, went out for but to eat and some drinks last night. It was good fun. Awesome. Oh dear. Marg, 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 you look like you're in a um, mission control there. Got oh, I'm having desperate on. trouble with sound. Can you hear me? We can, we can hear yep. you fine. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Excellent. We had two lots of sound happening at once. It was very confusing. And you know how wonderful I am at tech. Not. <laughs> so, hi, everybody. <laughs> so, here we've got Stephen, who's come from the UK. He's here to help us with fundraising. So Stephen is a professional fundraiser and he's come to spend a year in Bali volunteering with Bali Children Foundation. He's recently finished his, his master's in fundraising and philanthropy in the UK and now he's here. So we're really grateful to have him and you'll get to see quite a bit of him as we keep go as we continue these calls. Um, I'm going to let Prabha sit here in case someone else comes in and needs to be let in so I can talk to you properly. Um, fantastic to see so um, many. Um, that's where the volume is. Okay. Right. Okay. Fantastic to see so many of you from uh, BHU 2022. It's wonderful. Thank you for being such wonderful supporters. And great to see Clara and Bella, is it? <laughs> yep. 
Okay. And Kimmy, we, Kim is here too. Oh, Kim. Hi, Kim. Sorry, I'm not seeing you on the on the screen. So I'm going to hand over to Stephen to have a bit of a chat to you first, because he's the one who's going to be, he's a professional. <laughs> Excuse <laughs> me, I'll step back. Okay. Hey, guys, how are you? Hi, Stephen. Um, right, first and foremost, um, yeah, as Marg's built me up to be this most amazingly uh, qualified <laughs> individual, um, I guess uh, I guess I gotta better be the professional that I try to be. Um, so a bit of background for myself, originally from Aberdeen in Scotland, um, worked in oil and gas, became a qualified accountant, and then worked in fund management, and then realized that was not for me, um, I guess so I had discovered my social conscience that my mother has given me, um, uh, much to my father's disgust, uh, leaving the corporate world to go to work in the third sector and the bank of mum and dad is uh, still being used occasionally. Um, yeah, so I then moved to, to London, worked with a number of uh, large NGOs, uh, worked with philanthropists in London um, and England in general, but also some in Scotland. Uh, for not just uh, impact in the UK, but also global impact. Um, COVID came along. Uh, I'm very much an outgoing extrovert sort of individual. Uh, hated the whole working from home. Hated everything about COVID. Pretty crap for me. Pretty crap for the whole world. Um, so, you know, horrible time. Uh, but I decided to do something good in COVID, and that was to do a master's. So I finished my master's in September of last year, uh, which is in... Uh, philanthropy, fundraising, global philanthropy, psychology of donors, learning a lot about everything to do with philanthropy. And after all that, I decided I don't want to earn any money for a year. Uh, so let's take a break from the grind of London. And here I am in Bali helping Bali Children Foundation for their philanthropy stuff, but also just in general fundraising. Um, it's all very interlinked and it's all very similar. Uh, obviously, there's a massive difference between asking someone for 50 US dollars compared to asking them for 50 million US dollars. But um, I'm not expecting any of you to get 50 million US dollars. But if you want to, that would be great. Uh, so here I am. And I just want to just first of all say thank you to Tom. Uh, Tom is the, the brains behind all the event on this. A lot of the, the effort that goes into this is behind the scenes, not just here at BCF with the team here, but with Tom as well, uh, trying to make sure that you all have as an enjoyable a time as possible, but also uh, you raise a lot of money for the good cause here and act as a complete team and really enjoy it because the most important thing is that this is not a dress rehearsal. This is the game called life and we might as well enjoy it whilst we are here, even if that means for some bizarre reason, trekking across an island in the middle of the night. But good on you guys, good on you. I wouldn't do it, but kudos to you. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to talk about fundraising. I'm going to give you some tips. I'm going to give you what I read from uh, Dee, who unfortunately can't make this call, but uh, she's in Australia. She's a marketing support in Melbourne. Uh, she'll work with some of you guys, I'm sure, uh, on the actual fundraising platform. Uh, I've also got Prabha sitting behind me just over there. Prabha works in marketing uh, and Marg is kind of right behind me. So sorry, Mark, blocking you, but uh, there we go. Um, Fundraising. So you've all got your own profile pages uh, online. Uh, I believe that most of you have set it up. If you haven't set them up, I encourage you to do that ASAP because that is your platform for fundraising. Uh, it's, a, it's a great platform that makes it a lot easier uh, to deal with and a lot easier for you to promote uh, the great work that you're doing out uh, on the streets where you are currently training. And then once you come to Bali, uh, really ramp up that fundraising. But within that profile, it's really important that you have a profile picture. So when you are uh, advertising your efforts, that actually people that you are contacting, if that's, you know, for example, if that's through LinkedIn, uh, I'm not going to lie, you know, the people on my LinkedIn, even people on my Facebook, uh, Instagram that I don't know that well, uh, they might need a photograph to remind them who this is ask, asking them for a donation. Um, that's really important. But I'm going to go on to talk about the profile. I had a quick look this morning at some of the profiles that are online already, and I was really impressed with some of them. Um, I'm just going to, you know, shout out uh, a couple of names. Um, there was a, a guy called Austin Color, C-U-L-L-O-R. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. 
Uh, Austin's was uh, really good, primarily because Austin actually spelt out exactly what he was going to be doing on this run. He was basically, he said that he's getting up in the middle of the night and running across an island of, for 85, 84 kilometers overnight. That is, by any efforts, a Herculean effort by you guys. And each of you needs to start singing and shouting about that. It's no use saying, I'm doing the Valley Hope Run, please sponsor me. To 99% of the world, they will not know what that is. So big it up, shout about it. Um, I'm also going to shout out Amy Twist. Amy's uh, profile Amy's profile is something that I love and something that I kind of do sometimes once I know the donor. So good on you, Amy. Um, it threw quite a healthy dose of guilt into there. Uh, it talked about the fact that uh, Australians love Bali. Australians love coming to Bali, lying by the pool, ordering drinks. But did you know that whilst you lie there having a drink, very close, a matter of kilometers away, there are children living in poverty with no education. She also went on to talk about the fact that education in the West is often overlooked as a privilege, and it's almost just a, a right that we have of quality education. That does not exist in Bali and Indonesia. It does not exist in many parts of the world, but we're focusing on this country, this island at the moment. So, you know, do not be afraid to put the guilt on. I'll also, with regard to guilt, I'll also say something as well, and it's something that I strongly believe in, and something that I have seen a lot, is the phrase and the theory, you scratch my back, I will scratch yours. Think back across the last five, six years for people that you've supported, people that you've gone to their charity dinner and you put your hand up, probably, or maybe it's just me, in a drunken state and gone, I'll pay a thousand pounds for that picture, and you get it home and go, what the actual have I bought but think about that because you've helped their cause and I'm not saying for sure but the human psyche the psychology around donating is often you scratch my back I'll scratch yours I once went to an event where a guy gave 500,000 pounds to the cause at an event and the reason for that was because the guy hosting the event three years before gave a million to his cause that is exactly how the psychology works. So think about it. Brainstorm one evening when you're sitting down in front of the TV and it's really boring. Put it on mute and brainstorm to think who's who have you helped in the last few years. Your story on the profile has to be personal. Make it personal. Make it about you. Make it make it. Why are you doing this? The people you are asking know you. The people, if, if I was doing it, the people would be going, okay, this is Stephen. They don't want some corporate blurb on there. They want to know in my heart, why am I doing this? What, what is making me want to do this? And what is making me ask them? Also, with regards to a cause, if, well, I, thought I was going to, I was going to lie there, but I'm going to act about a caveat. Virtually every charity that I have worked for, I have been a donor. Because what kind of cheek do I have asking people to support a cause that I don't support? So, for example, here at BCF, I sponsor a child, £10 a month. You know, to be honest with you, I, I've lived in London, 10 quids, one drink. But that gives me the internal credibility to go out and ask anybody for support for this organization, whether that's a thousand pounds, a million pounds. The fact that I actually sponsor within my own financial capability is what matters. So please, I would suggest that each and every one of you donates something on your page to give it credibility to actually people look and say, well, wait a minute, John's supporting his own page. That's good. Or worse, John's not supporting. Well, he can take a hike. Also, I am utterly appalling with technology. I'm also pretty damn appalling at fitness. Um, so apparently there are these things called fit, fitness trackers now that you can track to your website or whatever. Use these. If you guys are aware of these and you, you use them, use them. I've seen friends of mine who are going to be running the London Marathon. I've seen them out every night in their locality, posting onto Facebook, 
with their giving page every night. You know, they tell, you know, even in, you know, I'm not, you know, even in Scotland, when there's snow on the ground, they're out there running, you know, and they're taking pictures and, you know, it, it makes me feel bad about not donating, but some of the causes I don't necessarily believe strongly in. So, you know, that's just my own personal psyche. Um, asking people. So, there are many, many, many studies being done on this, and I've read quite a lot of them over the last few years, particularly during doing the masters. There are studies that have been done to show that in, this, in the, the, the British, or in the British, but in the UK, in the world, there are some fears that are like in the top three or four of human psyche, and that can be death, the fear of public speaking, and the fear of asking a friend for money. Okay, remember, you personally are not asking the friend for money. You are asking the friend to support a cause that you believe in. So it's not that you're saying to the friend, can you give me 50 pounds to put into my account? It is not touching your account. So remember that mantra and that moral as well. There are studies that have been done to show that the reason that people do not give to charities are many, but the number one reason on many, many, many academic journals is that they were not asked. I used to work, I worked on a contract for the British Heart Foundation. When I worked on the contract, there was a guy who was the chair of the organization and had been for three years, was the head of Amazon UK and Ireland. I asked the guy for 250,000 pounds. I asked him at 10 a.m. in the morning. By 2 p.m., the amount was in the bank. No problems at all. I met him a few weeks later in the cafe, and he asked me to come over for a quick coffee. And he said, I've got some feedback that I want to give. And I was like, no problem at all. What, uh, you know, anything at all that I could do better? He went, no, no, not you, Stephen. He said, I want you to go back to the fundraising director and tell them that they screwed up spectacularly. And I went, oh, okay, well, in what way? And he went, I've been here for three years. You've lost 750K because I would have given on the first day that I walked in if I had been asked. Quite simply, human psychology believes that if you don't ask, you don't need the money. So actually, Valley Children Foundation not asking for money makes people think, oh, they're all right. They don't need the cash. They're all right. I'll give it to another cause because Johnny down the road has asked for his school. Even if the school's a private school that's got millions in the bank, the fact that he's asked, he's probably more likely to get. So don't be afraid to ask at all. Keep your things, keep your fundraising page updated, keep your socials updated, keep drip feeding with things all over the place. Anything you think, for example, if you think that you know that you see, um, you know, maybe some of you, hopefully all of you, but maybe some of you at the moment are connected with BCF. We have got a lot of social media that goes out there. If you see an image or you see a story that really pulls at your heart, feel free to share it and maybe you know add on your take on the story about how you know supporting you can help with the, with that child, with the graduation of that child, or whatever. You know, use the social media that you're seeing coming through from us to as a touch point for going out on your social media. You've all set a target. Targets are great, okay? But what happens when you're getting close to that target? The reality is once you reach your target, you're unlikely to get more. <clears throat> so if you're getting, if you're sitting at 75 or 80% of your ta target, put it up by two to 3,000 more because you want to continue to encourage. You don't want to reach your target. You want to just, almost in any fundraising campaign, you never want to reach your target. It's just the psyche of fundraising. You always want people to think, again, it goes back to the asking thing. You want them to think that you still need more, still need more. So that's all about. My mom and dad brought me up. Manners cost nothing. Psyche, psychology around donations is that quite simply, any donor, whether they're giving one pound or 50 million pounds, they do not have to give. So all you must do, whether it's a pound or a thousand pounds or dollars or Aussie dollars or US dollars or whatever you're getting, 
never forget to say two words and that's thank you because i have seen so many and i'm talking big ticket items here i have seen big ticket donors you refuse to support an organization because they never got thanked so please thank because you just never know where that donor might go on their journey with bcf on their journey with 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 Bally hope on their journey with tom or whatever you just never know so please i'm not saying that none of you wouldn't say thank you but it's an easy thing to forget so you know if you get a quick donation and it's and you know the person's a heavy user on social media thank them if you know that they're an email person, thank them by email. Just please say thank you. And finally, I'm going to do something that I might actually slightly regret here. And I've written it out to make sure that I get the wording correct. As a personal gift, I will get the top fundraiser a special gift at the bar, at the Alila, at the closing party. And as a Scot, believe me, with short arms and deep pockets, that pains me to say, and I know how expensive the Alila is, but let's make a competition of this, guys. Mm -hmm. I say game on, and let's see who can raise the most on their fundraising page. Go forth, go forth all. And I am absolutely delighted to be here in Bali, and in particular, helping each and every one of you on this call, but also individually, I will help. You know, I, am, uh, I can be awake at 8 a.m. in the morning, I can be awake at 5 a.m. in the morning, I can be awake at 8 p.m. at night. Uh, I'm here to help in any way that I can. So over to Tom to ask any first questions or just make general comments. Stephen, thanks so much. Um, had the pleasure of talking to you a few times and, and um, it's brilliant to have your expertise and energy. Um, I know in this group, we've got um, several brilliant fundraisers from September 2022. Um, so I think there's a brilliant opportunity just to you know, get their experience, what worked for them. And and then as we're recording this, share that, we're going to share this back to the 2023 team. So I think that's probably the highest value. And then obviously we've got Clara, Bella, um, Kim here from, from May 23. So maybe we do that and then a chance for those guys to ask me questions if they want. Yeah. Um, that's what it, I'm thinking. Tom, you, you, Tom, do you want to introduce the, the people from the previous years by name then? Of Just course, yes, one. sorry. Of course. Um, so we've got um, Beck, Gus, um, DJ, and Goat. Or... Oh, and we've lost Tom. No. I mean, Goat, Goat is particularly special. Most people pause for a long time when they say his name, <laughs> so that's probably just all he's done. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, DJ, well, we could start with you. We would just maybe... <clears throat> any experience you've had or obviously you do a huge amount of fundraising so just any top <clears throat> top advice for for people starting out fundraising or i'm not not going to be able to top what Stephen has just said but in in the in the interest of thanking Stephen, thank you for giving up a year of your time to do support this i mean it's a charity that's become incredibly close to my heart over the years since since tom first wrote me in for the first one um the, the, I, I really like your point on the targets. Um, and sorry if it's a bit noisy where I am, I can barely hear myself, but hopefully you can all hear me. Um, the targets, one of the, one of the equally important things I think is setting a target which does seem achievable. Because if you, if you put a million dollars out there as your target to start with, yeah, it's, people won't donate because they think, well, there's no way they're ever going to get to that. Whereas if it's something that looks achievable, like five or 10 grand, something like that, and then you keep rolling it as you get closer. That's that's been my experience that you can you can start out with five and end up with thirty because people you know you keep pushing that you keep pushing that target up. Um, but no, exactly the same. Ask people. People get asked all the time. Um, actually, Deanne's, Deanne's husband is doing a great one at the moment. He's doing some fundraising for a run that's that I'm really passionate about. He, which he, he sent a message to me on social media. I responded and I'm definitely going to donate. But what he very cleverly did is that every day or two since then, he's either liked that comment or added an extra comment to say, oh, I'm really looking forward to this. Oh, now there's only 120 days to go because I haven't donated yet. And he's making sure that it stays front of mind for me because it's very easy to say, yep, I'm going to donate and have every intention to do it. And then people just forget, you know, that's that's what the world is like at the moment. You're getting a million emails a day and a million messages a day. So don't be afraid to follow up with 
people. If they say, no, I'm not going to donate, well, fine, that's the end of it. But if they say they are, then follow them up and just remind them because they will, people will just forget. Um, and also use each other. Like there's a, um, one, of the, one of the things that Gus and I were going to do a while back and which maybe hope we'll get around to doing one of these years is doing sort of a large event together. Um, so if you can pull your resources, you'll find that people have different strengths or different connections or ways of pulling people together. We did a really good event a few, a few years ago with Samantha Gash, who was one of the, um, the founding sort of advocates for Bali Hope Run, where she had a film, she had a large um, social media profile. She had a film that we could show that she made available to us for free. And we just had a, a film night where we screened it. She answered a few Q and A questions and we charged people I can't remember now, five or 10 bucks to come and watch and, and raised a couple of grand off the one night. So there's a whole, you know, there's a reach out to each other for the sort of things that you might be able to do together, particularly if in the same locations. Um, but other than that, I think all, all the things that, that the fundamental thing that you said, Stephen, which is just ask, like it's, and, and don't ask as a group email, send a, if you're going to send an email or a social media, put up a social media post, great, but then send individual messages to people addressing them by name and asking personally, because that's a, that's going to, it encourages that engagement. It's going to be much better for, it's very easy for people just to like a post and move on. But if you send them a message or an email or give them a call, they've got to actually respond and you'll find more often than not, they'll say, sure, I've got, you know, here's 20 bucks or 50 bucks or hopefully here's 250,000 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just one comment. Fantastic. Um, Thanks so much, DJ. Um, I shall just wait for Stephen to. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I believe that Kim Kim is on the call, and we've not, we've had no uh, we've had no previous call with Kim. So I just want to just say a special mention to Kim that if she's if it's all new to you and everything, um, I'm very happy to have a uh, one to one uh, quick call with you at any time. Um, obviously, I'm on the WhatsApp group, so just send me a direct message on there and I will schedule accordingly. All right, thank you. Sorry, Tom, carry on. No, perfect. Um, Gus, um, you did an amazing job fundraising uh, 2019 and 2022. So I'd um, love to hear your your insights and, um, and uh, yeah, no, no you, you did some great stuff. So, yeah, um, I think for me, it's interesting when I think back, I, I probably changed my approach both years, a slightly different approach. Um, I'll probably reiterate the message of ask. I think I did one social media post uh, in September um, and I got like one donation or two donations. Um, so for me, that just doesn't work. So what I find is um, I'll write a list of every single person I know and I'll work through that list one by one and send them a personalized email um, like DJ said, you know, no group emails. It's, you know, how's X, Y, Z going on in your life? And, um, you know, as you, as I might have told you, I'm doing, you know, the, the Bali run again, and I'd love for you to support and um, a bit of background as to why it's important to me. So I think personalizing it as much as possible really helps. I think this, this second year I had to get a little bit more creative, um, probably with my friends, a bit of a younger demographic, um, how can I kind of get them a little bit more engaged and what can I give back to them? So I organized a dinner uh, with about 20 of my closest friends and I said to them all, um, you know, come along, it'll be free alcohol, free food. Well, not free food, but all I ask in return is that you, you donate $120 each um, for the night. And I found that was an amazing way um, to... to Get them to donate because they got something in return they went and had a night out which is you know for a night out in sydney that's pretty good <laughs> for, for a really nice meal and, and and drinks um and and then i got to talk a little bit on the night about i showed the video as well um the bali hope video and and that was really impactful so just being a little bit more creative about how you go about it for the right audiences as well um I obviously had to reach out to some businesses and, and get them to, to throw in the thing for free. So if you've got any contacts as well that you can leverage, I mean, that always helps. Um, but that was a really great way to, to maximize um, the donations from my friends who may have only just donated 20 bucks if I had posted on social media. 
Angus, yeah, it's a great point. It's a really good point. But you, you also got some corporate backing, didn't you, Gus? Yeah, I mean, I was really fortunate that um, my work was able to match um, donations as well. So maybe worth looking into if that's something that your work offers. Uh, that was through a platform called Good Good to Give um, that they've got. And so anything that went through there, they they dollar matched as well. Uh, which was amazing. So that that went a very long way. And you got any, your outcome was outstanding, wasn't it? Was that it was over was it over twenty thousand, twenty twenty two thousand or something ridiculous? Yeah, yeah, I think just yeah. over twenty. Um, well, the well, other the other good one is um, is outsource the asking as well. So I I put um, mum and dad, you know, reach out to your networks as well and and do some asking, and that always helps. Um, you know, if you've got a partner or family that can also outsource um that's quite yeah. useful the thing is the thing is gus what you what, what you've done there is you know you, you've 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 done what i've done as well you've done i, I love your confidence you know you've, you've got that kind of almost cheeky brazen neck to just you know go out there again but you're not asking for yourself but you know at the end of the day you're i don't even know your who your mum or dad or whatever but i'm sure you know your mum and dad probably asked the neighbor next door because the neighbor sent their kid through three months before for sponsored blah, blah, blah at the school or whatever. And again, it's that you scratch my back, I scratch yours. And it's just widening that ask uh, and making it easier. I love the fact you touched on the corporate side because I've written that down. Actually, I was going to mention that when before you, the minute you mentioned corporate. Um, there are many, many, many corporates out there that do do matching. There are people who work for corporates that don't even realize they do it. So if you are approaching your mate, John, that you know works for... I'm trying to think Foster's Qantas, you know, a big, big Australian company. Um, the, the chances of them doing match match to us to a, a limit for each employee is high. So, you know, don't be afraid to to, to look at that because that doubles your money. It's match funding. It's 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 perfect. It's great. So uh, mm. so good on you, Gus, and um thank you very much. Are you racing again this year? Uh no, I'm not, but sitting in All this right. call, I'm getting I'm getting very tempted. So I'll have to. I'll shoot Tom a message after. Give it, give it a month. We'll take that, we'll that as a yes, Gus. Yeah. I was, I was going to say, I think I'll be buying you the drink, but now that yeah. you're the game is open to all people for a drink. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. The one, one thing that, that just did spark for me as well is that um, if you know someone does have a business, I would often ask, uh, would your business be in a position to donate as well? Because typically, if they're donating on behalf of the business, they're probably going to donate more than if they would just personally as well. Yeah. I, I, I spotted one, uh, a guy called Alex, who's based in London, uh, who's doing the, the run for us this year. Alex's fundraising page is actually a really good mix of corporates and uh, individuals. Uh, I spoke with Alex uh, not long after I started at BCF in December, uh, and he, he was hammering his new york client because it was tax year end the 31st of december so uh again it's a good thing for him to do so uh as you said corporates will support uh again you, even if you're approaching an individual to ask they're not you're asking their corporate so you're not actually asking them to give money yeah so good on you I'll oh, keep my fingers crossed gus I might get you and you and benny ben is thinking of coming back too so maybe you guys can uh go sub eight together and uh anyway i'll keep my fingers crossed um beck uh another amazing human who did an outstanding job in both the run and fundraising in september so great to see you back and yeah love love to um hear any thoughts you've got or advice you'd want to share to the 23 team yeah thank you thank you tom um yeah i'm like uh gus i really um envious of you ladies doing this run again i yeah being in here i'm like oh i'd really love to do it again and i would love to definitely get back there one day and beat my time from from last year so um but yeah with my fundraising i um i actually work for jetstar so i have quite a big network of people in my um office and i used to work in the ops center so i was working with yeah working 24 7 with a lot of people in there and i built really big really great relationships so I put a big um, a big work email out to essentially like our whole level one of our building um, and just, yeah, obviously just highlighted the run. I put in the video links from that were already on YouTube 
Um, and I also put the map to show and I said that black line that you can see is what I will be running um, and obviously put, put the figures in there. I also did a table and highlighted how hot it was going to be and just all the facts about the run and it was just basically like people like, I just can't believe that you're actually going to do this. And it really become quite a talking point um, for three months of my life when I obviously signed up for it and throughout yeah, my fundraising. And also just touching on the targets that you were talking about before. So I had a lot of people that when I was getting closer to the target, so I vividly remember one of the guys, Johan, he's like, oh, now I can donate to you because you're almost, I wanted to hit the target. So he was waiting. I had a lot of people waiting because they wanted to be the final $30. So when he did that, and then I think I adjusted my figure to be, yeah, higher again. And also um, my partner, Ryan, who come and supported me, same thing. I think he was looking at the target and then he donated a big lump sum. And I was like, oh, my God. And he's like, well, I wanted you to, wanted to keep your target. But because it was a rolling one, there was there was lots of people that hit the target for me. So, um, and I just got really lucky. I didn't really have to ask people. I mean, with my uni friends, um, that go out partying, I just sort of put the guilt trip on them and said, you know, sacrifice one of your nights for me, you know, to help help the people over in Bali. And, um, yeah, so I just got really, really lucky. I had extremely generous friends and family. And um, I did think about doing a raffle initially, but then time just slipped away and I just, yeah, just never got around to it. But, yeah, I was lucky enough to hit my target and yeah, it did really well. So, yeah, my advice, try and spread the news amongst your work friends and, um, yeah, I also obviously put it all over social media and whenever anybody <clears throat> sent me a donation, if I was friends with them on social media, I would actually thank them and I would highlight their name. And if I had like an old photo from like the, throughout the years, I actually posted a photo of me and them from a time in our life. And there was a lot of embarrassing ones and people were messaging me saying, I can't, I can't wait to see what photo you're going to put up of me. And yeah, it was just something really special. So it was, um, it was good fun to relive some memories and yeah, and just to thank them personally. So that was my experience. It's interesting, it's interesting that you mentioned the map because the, the, the map mm. that you'll have probably seen that we use on social media sometimes, it just seems to generate a lot of engagement for, for in general. So I can see why it would have would have been actually quite handy for fundraising because it just yeah. very clearly describes what you're doing and and um it, yeah, it's just in a very engaging image. So, um, yeah. And yeah, speaking of the map, I think I think the goat might have something that he might want to show if he's prepared to turn his camera on. Is my camera on or off? It's off. It's off. Oh, good lord! There, there, there <laughs> so go. I'm going to hand it over to you, and you can put your camera on. <laughs> Hello, everyone. There he is. There he is. <laughs> I've been hiding in darkness. Now we're happy. Yes. Sorry, I, I, I was on mute for ages. Either I was chatting away and no one was responding. So it's anyway. Um, yeah, today I got, well, you can't see it because it's got that bloody plastic. So the, the map is now on the bicep. So, um, oh, it's, um, <laughs> wow. which, um, it's, and it's, it's more than the map. It's, it's what, it's, it's actually what the map um, denotes. And inside that map is all the people that have shared in my journey. Um, sort of signifies that also signifies what the, the actual race journey is and it can mean a whole lot of things but um when you actually point out on the map what you're going to do it does sort of you know not take up the heartstrings as such but it sort of puts people a little bit in awe of what you're about to do and uh you know what you will complete and yeah and that tends to elicit you know a, a donation fairly quickly i think once they sort of comprehend it to your uh you're going to sacrifice yourself for the benefit of others. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, so play on that little thing that was done today. And, um, yeah, so I've been I spent five months deliberating and booked in and um, got it. So, looks like everybody has to get tattoos now. That's oh. yeah. Is that, yeah. Is that was, your first tattoo in the 21 years that you've been alive, Pete? Uh, 22, just, just, just oh, 22, it, but, sorry. <laughs> but yes, I'm, I'm a complete clean skin, but uh, this is special and uh, we are actually. I feel an inch taller tonight, so I'm six foot one tonight rather than six foot. So, um, yeah, I might do an Instagram account for the for the body hope tattoos. Just to... <laughs> yeah, there's an idea for it, but yeah, forgetting my tattoo a little bit, that 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 map does signify so much, and it's it, it's it's certain to the outline of Bali. It's it shows the route, um, but inside that map is, is is so much more than me. So, so yeah, play on that. Um, yeah, and again, just what what. 
particularly the new runners. I mean, some of us that have done it know, know that not the difficulty so much, but what that challenge is and um, just let your, your supporters know that uh, you're going to put yourself up to, you know, one of the ultimate challenges and um, give a little until it hurts, basically. So, yeah. So thanks for dobbing me in, Beck, about, about that. I'll, I'll get you later. Pete, any, any fundraising um, pearls of wisdom? You, you did an outstanding job as well, so... Yeah, I, um, look, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't a fundraiser per se prior to that, but I think just echoing all the things that, have, that Angus has said, um, what Beck said, what DJ said, um, tap into your corporates where you can. I've started to um, build a relationship with Brooks Running now, which is each time I approach them, I'm getting a little bit more out of them. So it's sort of, you know, drip fair. The first donation I got from them was like a $250 voucher that I was able to raffle or auction. Um, the next time I did it, I got a couple of vouchers. They're now promising to give me shoes for wherever I run and also another six pairs of free shoes that I can that I can sell off. So so their donations are getting a little bit bigger as the relationship gets better. But importantly, I'm, I'm keeping in touch with them as well, letting them know what I'm doing, um, you know, sending them some snippets of the BCF and what they're doing and and so that, that they understand where, where their money's going. So, um, yeah, if you can build those relationships, I know we've got three months before the next run, but if you've got... Um, if you've got relationships with any corporates in here, try and tap into that and, and see what you can get out. And as Angus said, ask them if they can, you know, um, if they're in a position to donate. And if they can, then, then terrific, because often their donations will be a little bit bigger than, than the mum and dad ones that we that we, we rely on largely, really. So um, uh, events are great. I loved Angus's idea of a dinner. Um, I, I'm actually doing the swim run this year, and that was one idea that I had was to, get a, either a group of couples or a, you know, a group of guys or whatever, 20 guys, 200 bucks a head, eat and drink all you can and, you know, and I'll take, you know, I'll take 50 bucks a head or something off there with like $1,000 for, for watching them have a really good time. So that, that they're good ideas. Um, local communities, if, if you, you know, run a disco or a band or, or whatever, there's a, there's a multitude of things you can do. So it depends on the community you're involved in and, and, uh, and what's available to you. But, yeah, I, and I, I guess Stephen now is a fantastic resource as well. So, um, yeah, tap into tap into those things. Use me, use me. The one thing that I would I would say, it really good, some really good points there from 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 you and on all of the the previous razors runners. Um, with regards to corporates, um, I would say the sooner you start contacting them, the better. Sorry, we've got somebody to admit. Oh, I'm just admitting. Someone and uh, yeah, if you're if you're speaking with corporates, the sooner the better, because if you're going to try to get money from corporates, I might have to go through a number of different layers of you know corporate approval or whatever. Uh, whereas if you just go to an individual, obviously then they can just put their credit card on. But if you do uh, speak with Johnny that works at NAB, for example, and Johnny's like, yeah, yeah, right, I need to speak to my CSR person, and then he hasn't got the right CSR person, and he speaks to somebody else, it can just take a a, you know, a, a month or so. So, uh, you know, it's not one to leave and leave and leave. I would try try thinking about that sooner rather than later. Um, but, you know, I mean, also, you know, I wanted to say as well, don't forget, and, and I don't know for sure the statistic, I, th I think it's about 20% uh, of money is raised after the event. There's a whole heap of people, <laughs> and I, I'm going to put my hand up and say I'm included in this with regards to it in the past. There's a whole heap of people, whole heap of people that want to see you complete it to give you the money. And they won't give you money until you finish it. Um, whether or not they think that you're going to bail on them, you're going to get drunk in Seminyak the night before and not do the run or whatever, you know, you've got to do it, get over the finishing line and you'll see a flood of money potentially coming in. So you've got to keep promoting it. You've got to like show your trainers at the end of it that are absolutely wrecked. Uh, and, you know, again, it's a bit of guilt trip as well for people that have been meaning to, mean, meaning to sponsor you but never quite got around to it. And they're like, oh, he's on Bali now. Forget about it, but actually, no, you know, keep pushing it after the event. Um, and again, it's just, <clears> I'm going to be scared to ask uh, for anything. Tom? Yeah, I think that's right. I think, I think people, people are fascinated to follow 
the journey of someone, especially a newcomer to endurance events, who's going to run 84 kilometers across an island through the night and, the, and following your journey towards that is kind of, is really fascinating for people who are just, you know, who aren't into it. They're like, wow, this is, you know, I know Tom five years ago, he was in the pub all the time and now he's running across the island. And, and um, so they will be following your journey on social from or from before now until the race. And when they see you get to Old Man's in Bali, if they haven't donated, them donating makes them part of the journey. And I think people love being part of part of the part of the journey. So um spread the net as wide as possible to involve as many people as possible in your journey to run across Bali and lift dozens of kids out of you know out of poverty. Um, it's a really powerful story. Um, and more important, it's a really powerful journey for you as an individual and therefore your friends and family. So yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing what you're doing. So involve as many people as possible in it. Um, when I, when I fundraised back in 2017, I got to 10k and I got, I think 163 donations averaging $60. And I looked at my I looked at my into my socials. I've probably had two thousand on Facebook, and a thousand on Instagram. So it was only you know it was roughly ten percent of my contacts. So in hindsight, I'm like, wow, I should have done a lot better because what I was doing was the same thing you're doing. So if I'd been more, been kind of louder and prouder about what I was doing, I, I could probably maybe could, could have even doubled that. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I think that's one thing I'd share. But, I think yeah. can I just add to what Tom just said? Just be particularly the new runners, just be super proud of what you're about to do. It's um, you're going to do something that's absolutely amazing. If you can convey that even partly to to your audience, your, your family, your friends, your your corporate, whoever, then it, it just may may just ring their bell and, and just elicit another donation. But you are about to do something that's incredibly special. Um, incredibly difficult, um, so don't be afraid to, to to push that out there. Be really, really proud of, of what you're about to do in three months' time. So, and Pete, you got to meet some of the kids you you got to meet some of the kids you directly helped at the start line, didn't you? And you, you were sharing yeah, was, that fact. I'm very fortunate. I I also uh, sponsor a boys' education in Bali, and um, actually got to meet him. He came to the start line. Uh, on the Saturday night in in, in Lavina, um, and that was a yeah, it was a pretty special moment for me. I've, I've subsequently seen him again. I'm catching up with him again in a couple of weeks, but um, for us to meet on the start line for the very first time was, was also special. And um, um, but and also being able to go into his to his family home and uh, and, and see just see exactly what we're what we're trying to bring them out of. Um, was, was, yeah. was incredibly motivated. It was very humbling, but it was also incredibly motivating to you know to, to keep contributing to the to the foundation, particularly. So um, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Um, I, spoiler alert here, but I, I, I think that your Thursday, whatever date that is, I think the twenty fifth or twenty sixth of May will be. And it's not the race day, and it's not after. It's not the after party. But I think that day will be very very special. So if you can remember the Thursday. Um, when you get to meet the children at the schools, then um, it'll sort of bring home why you're asking people for money um, mm -hmm. and, and the benefit that those donations are going to have. So, uh, so yeah, enjoy I, that day. I can't, I can't, I can't echo those. You know, I came, I came out to Bali in June of last year to visit Marg and the charity, and and I went back to London, and my mates were like, "What's going on? Why aren't you buying the champagne anymore?" And I'm like, "That's a kid's." That's a kid's school for the year from that one bottle. I'll just buy the 20 pound round instead. It really does change a lot of your perspective on life. You know, I can still be a little bit extravagant at times, but it really has changed a lot of my perspective on life. Uh, so much so, as you said, I mean, coming up, you know, for a year coming here. But, you know, I mean, you guys will have a great time and never forget about the impact. And never forget about the impact on you. And that goes back to what I said initially about making this personal. The people that you are asking for support are supporting you. They know you, they love you, and they want you to do well. 
And at the same time, it's that win-win scenario of helping a child's education and, you know, a child's education that we all take for granted. So, you know, good on you guys. And, you know, I think, you know, we've, it's coming up to the end of the call, I think, probably. Marg, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. I wanted to leave it with Stephen to chat today because he had a lot of great things to share. But I think I'd like to say that what is achieved is a gift that keeps on giving. And that's the beauty of, of education because once you've got facilities set up, you keep using them, keep using them. And Stephen and I have been out in the field a lot this week in the facilities that Bali Hope funded from last year. And it's just fantastic to have these great facilities and to be able to, we did a big art project on Wednesday, which was amazing. So what you do for yourself is very special. And the gift you're giving for the children is not just for the year or the following year. It just keeps giving. I mean, every room that we do has got a life of five to eight years. So we end up with incredible impact from the fundraising. Um, and I'll start sharing. We've been so flat out trying to get the kids' literacy back up to scratch after COVID. And it's working really well. But times are pretty challenging at the moment. So we will start chatting more about what's going on. We'll share more information with you, but be for sure that your donations are super important and they make a massive impact. So thank you for what you've already done and particularly to the last year's crew and for this year's those who've started. But yeah, let's really get into it now. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mark. Um, just, just I'll just reiterate one, my stupid... Yep. So I just wanted to I'll just reiterate going. the fact that on for a drink at bar on me. Okay. Someone here. Our is coming up saying we're unstable. Uh, we love the Just just say a quick hello to Car in there. Um good to see you. Um Stephen, I'll just introduce you to Karen, who was one of the originals from 2018, okay, coming okay. back in May, be frozen. Okay. Sorry. Is it frozen up? Bali um, Internet. Oh, uh, hey. Bali Internet. Karen, just, just say a couple of words just to introduce yourself. Be, be great. Uh, I'm Karen. I was, yeah, one of the OGs back in 2018. I think back then I was... um. I, yeah, I was, I was the, the best raiser in 2018 as well, managed to raise 11,000. Um, the way I did that is, is I made my life harder and I went out and I said, I'm just going to do challenges. Um, so if people wanted to give me a challenge at the 21K mark, um, I had to donate a hundred bucks or something at the 42K mark and it had to be like 250 at the 73 and then the 84. Um, it's made my life a little bit harder, but one of the best strategies is going out and asking for specific amounts rather than just asking, you know, can you make a donation? I'd say a hundred bucks or for those people, I've, I've at least, I'm a bit lucky. I've got a decent network of business people um, You're saying, just give me 250 bucks or, or give the kids 250 bucks and putting that figure that I wanted. Um, and that worked really well as well. And then following up with people who didn't um, donate, a lot of them said, oh, thanks so much for reminding me. I wanted to do this. Um, I just forgot to. Yeah. 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 Basically, you know, your tip is basically just keep asking. I think this is proof our, our group needs to do a really good job so that we can get right. um, BHU, uh, we can get them some good uh, good internet. Just freezing up there a bit, Stephen. It's sort of, it, it's almost like it deliberately kicked in when he promised to start right. buying people drinks at the right. bar. 
<laughs> I don't know how he's going all together. <laughs> Mention it too many times and the, uh, the internet, yeah, cuts. Um, hey, so I think we might wrap it up at that point, but... Um, could, I, sorry, Tom, could I quickly just ask about the T-shirts um, that yes. you mentioned? Are they... Uh, the Barley Hope t-shirts that we could wear when we were doing training. Someone mentioned that there were some available or? Yeah, it should be on, should be in the post to you. Some have arrived. I know some would, they've all, I'll check with D because D was sending them out, I think this week or late last week. So I'll double check, but some people have got them already. I know that they've arrived in London. Some, are you, are you in Switzerland at the moment or? Yeah, uh, so it takes ages to get here, so. Well. Yeah, so it's probably that's probably in on route. But I'll double check with D um, and come back to you directly. And and for me as well, because I'm I'm wondering. I can't remember what address I put in, but it's definitely not New Zealand. So it would be Australia. I'll but, double check. Yeah. I'll double check and get back to you both um, individually um, later today. This has been really, oh, really, really, that. really helpful. Like I love all the ideas. Like I'm really grateful that you've done this. Thank you. Awesome. Mark's uh, just here back. Um, but yeah, great yeah, to see sorry. you. Sorry, we, 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 we disappeared. Can I just quickly jump in? Um, Beck, Beck's iPad just crashed terribly, but she just said to pass on the message that if any of the new runners particularly want to get in contact with her about anything, then just get in contact with Beck, just reach out and even just to say hello. So um, there you go. So, so, so she apologises that her iPad just went. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Thanks. Cact cactus. Yes. <laughs> Won't be laughing later. Okay, though. guys. Well, listen, thank you so much for... Awesome to see you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. Thanks, Bye guys. Nice to see you all. Thanks so much. Bye. Great to see you all. Everyone. Have fun. Bye. All right. Thanks, Bye. guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you.